In this exercise, we're going to take advantage of the third kind of light source that's available to you inside of Photoshop, and that's the point light. And we're going to use a single point light to illuminate this entire scene. I've saved my progress as the darksphere.psd. It's found inside the 05 materials folder. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a few clicks and actually press the F key to switch to the full screen mode. So I have a lot of room to work here. And I'm going to double click on my layer thumbnail to bring up the 3D panel. And see this infinite light source right there? As I recall, it's not even inside the spherical panorama, so it's not getting to our little sphere. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it by clicking on it to make it active, and then clicking on the trash can there at the bottom of the 3D panel. All right, let's go ahead and add a new light source. But something I want you to notice, see how I have two camera angles? One's called camera one, and the other's called final view. Camera one was something that Photoshop created automatically as we were working along. I don't want it. I just want to tidy things up. So I'd like to drop down to the trash can icon, but it's not available. You can't get rid of it that way. If you want to get rid of saved views, then switch over to one of the camera tools. Go up to the options bar. Go ahead and choose the offending view from the pop-up menu. And you'll switch to that view, of course. Don't worry about that. Then click the little trash can icon up here in the options bar. And now, once you've done that, you can switch back to the view you were working with. Hopefully, custom view two will not be saved when I switch to final view here. All right, we're not seeing it inside the 3D panel, so that's good. But I just want you to know, the little page icon and the trash can icon, they only work with light sources and nothing else. All right, so let's create a new light by clicking on the little page icon and choosing New Point Light. And basically, here's how it works. An infinite light, I was telling you, is a light that is so far away that it illuminates the scene with parallel rays of light. So it's a big, huge, distant light. You can't change its position, but you can change its angle. A spotlight, of course, is a directional light whose rays go out in a kind of cone, and you can change both the position of the light and its direction. A point light is like a bare bulb hanging from a ceiling. You can change its position as much as you like, but it's omnidirectional, so you can't change the direction. So in many ways, it's the opposite of an infinite light. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and choose a point light. It's very easy to control. However, notice here, I can't see where the darn thing is. So I showed you how you can go up to the view menu and choose show and then choose 3D lights in order to see the lights. However, here's another way to work as long as we have the 3D panel open. You can drop down to this little eye icon right there with the grid underneath it and it says toggle miscellaneous 3D extras. Well, what it means is those same options we saw in the view menu. So you can go ahead and turn on the 3D light or turn off the ground plane, all that good stuff. I'm going to choose 3D light, and there's my light source right there. All right. Again, you can drag it around as much as you want using one of the light tools, and that would not be the 3D light rotate tool. Even though it appears to be active here inside the 3D panel, once you select it, you'll notice that it's inactive up here in the options bar, and you do not have access to the orientation values. So what you need to do if you're going to drag the light around is switch to either the drag tool or the slide tool. Up to you. And then, of course, you can take advantage of the widget as well if you want. Or you can just go ahead and enter the numerical values that I came up with, 600 for the X value. And then we want to make sure that light is poised directly above the sphere. And so the back and forth axis at this point is the Y axis. So I'm going to match that Y axis value by changing Y to 420. So in other words, both the light and the sphere have a Y value of 420. And then I'm going to change the Z value to 500 which lifts the light source. All right, now I'm going to drop down here to the bottom portion of the 3D panel. The intensity value by default is 1. The color of the light is white, which is normally what you want, unless you want to add some colored gels to your lights. And then I'm going to leave Create Shadows on, and I'm going to change the softness value to 20%. All right, let's get a sense of what we've done. You might as well go ahead and turn off 3D light, and I'd like you to turn off the 3D ground plane as well. And I'm going to press Shift F to switch back to the standard window mode, and I'm zooming in here a little bit as well. Now go ahead and click on Sphere Material located under Sphere 2. And I want you to click the down pointing arrow head. And you'll see this long list of the various materials that ship along with Photoshop. Now I want you to make sure that you're seeing all of them. I told you to do this in a previous chapter. However, just to confirm, check to make sure that your final material is called Plastic Textured Blue. If it isn't, then click the right pointing arrow head and choose Default for Ray Tracer. And then, when you get this dialog box, click on Append. In my case, I'm going to click Cancel, because I already have all the materials loaded. And I'd like you to select this guy, Metal Silver Brushed, in order to apply that material. And now to see how everything renders out, click on Scene to make it active. 
And let's change the quality from interactive painting to ray trace draft and go ahead and let her rip. And of course, that very first pass is going to show us most of the highlights and shadows and so forth, as well as notice we're beginning to see reflections. And so the sphere is reflecting the entire 3D scene, as you can see, subject to the reflect value that's associated with the material. Now, I don't have a shadow. What happened to my shadow? Well, I didn't give Photoshop anything to cast a shadow onto. It might be casting a shadow way on the bottom of the spherical panorama, but that's too far away. So press the escape key, if you're working along with me, to stop the render. Then go up to the 3D menu, choose ground plane shadow catcher, go ahead and click OK in response to the alert message, and the scene will automatically render again. Now, we're going to speed up the process, of course, but you can see the reflections building on the sphere, and you can also see the shadow appearing underneath the sphere. Anyway, that's good enough for now. It gives us a sense of what's going on. We don't have to see the entire render take place, so I'm going to press the escape key in order to interrupt it. If you decide to interrupt a render for some reason, and then you want it to start up again after the interruption, go up to the 3D menu and choose Resume Progressive Render. Now, if it's dimmed, it means you've applied some major modification that requires you to start the render all over again. But if all you did was click to interrupt, then you can choose this command to resume the render process, and Photoshop will once again go about its business, and it'll give you smoother shadows and smoother reflections and so forth. So we now have a scene illuminated by a single point light. In the next exercise, we'll see how to work with materials.